Well, my next guest <laughs> is a national treasure who has interviewed over 2,000 stars in a hugely impressive career which spans four decades. I'm very pleased to welcome him here tonight, Sir Michael Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> if I give you my sword, will you give me your heart? And, you, and you've said in those early days, there were no focus groups and charts, you were just <laughs> left to get on with it. Well, I mean, um, the, the enormous thing, I mean, going back, not, not, I mean, a bit further than that when I first started, was that, I mean, I actually nobody knew what to do in television. I mean, when I joined Granada in, in what, 63, I mean, it was like being in a, in a room full of people who were enthusiastic, but knew bugger all about the industry. And it worked, and it was fun. It was really fun. I mean, it, and it produced some extraordinary people. It was a marvelous television. <laughs> So do you think TV today suffers because of this lack of a laissez-faire attitude? No, I think it's basically. changed. I think inevitably, of course, it's changed. I mean, the technology has changed more than anything else. The multiplicity of channels and things like that have inevitably changed the way that uh, the, the demands on the industry. And I think there's a confusion in the industry at present because, you know, the, the, the technology has advanced at a huge and, and rapid rate. But nobody's quite sure where it's going, what's happening, what do we do, how do we feed it, what, what kind of programs do we do. I think, sadly, if you look at, say, ITV as an example, I mean, I mean, a, a company I worked for, Granada, in my early, my former, my very first company, and I worked for it for many, many years. I mean, I look at Granada now and the Granada then and think, well, what happened? I mean, where, what, what really did happen? Because the change is not just profound, it's, it's, it's ultimate, it's, it's, it's totally unrecognizable. And, and do you think your show would get off the ground now? So? No, we wouldn't have a chance. Well, I can't now, chance. Not at all. I mean, they'd say it was Orson Welles. It, it, was a, it was a very broad net that we cast, and, and that was a joy of it, too. I mean, it was a very, very boring job indeed to sit down and just interview you know, the, the stars, if you like. I mean, it, it, you had to have that rich mixture. And also, too, I mean, the joy of it was, was to put together people with dis seemingly disparate occupations, but who came together in the show, mm. you know, different disciplines. It was wonderful. Um, um, why can't we do that now? Is that because the nature of celebrity has changed? And the nature of te the television talk show has changed as well. I mean, I think that now that, that it's, it's been defined as being the American example, if you like, basically, where. The, the host is, is not a, a, an inquisitor, if you like, but he's a, he's a stand-up comic, basically. Yeah. And, so and, he, and he has, and he has the, the, the foil to the humor sitting next to him. I mean, that's what you've got now. I mean, look at, look at the range of people who are doing talk show. I don't know where they come from. I mean, Jonathan's an example of somebody who's he's not a stand-up comic, although he'd like to be, but, but the, fact <laughs> <of> matter, <laughs> the fact of the matter is that Jonathan's very capable of doing a very good interview. Uh, and I saw him do one the other day. But you know, generally speaking, it's, it's sort of along that wave of you've got to be sort of not confrontational, but you've got to be the star of the show, if you like. And the other, and the, the people you book are kind of ulterior to that. And and I think that that's that's one way of doing it. Of course, it is. It's not my way, and I don't see anybody doing that kind of interview conversation we, we used to do now. Do you know that it takes a man to fall from the top of Big Ben? See, Mike's always quoting from the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't matter. At the drop of a hat, he'll drop one out, you see. It takes a man in a tweed suit five and a half seconds to fall from the top of Big Ben to the ground. Now, there's not many people know that. I just want you to know that Peter Sellers is not in. Not many people know that. So it's not, it's not about the art of conversation anymore. It's about ego. Well, it, no, it's about, it's about laughs. It's about getting a laugh. And it's about... It's about it's about trivial things in that sense, you know. Um, not that I, I ever thought the talk show was about important things, but I think it was about good conversation. It was like a very good dinner party. That's the, 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 the image I had in mind. Whenever I did a show, I thought, well, book three or four people who I'd love to have dinner with, actually, love to put together as a group. And then you put the camera there, 
and you, the audience, look over and, and partake in this, in this conversation. And I never saw myself in that sense as being important as, as a face, as a figure. I mean, inevitably, because you look for a long time, you do become that famous person. But, but that's not your job as an interviewer. Your job as an interviewer is to bring the other people out. You see, the, the, and that's the emphasis. If you get that emphasis wrong, then the, the nature of the show changes. And the nature of the, of the definition of interviewing changes, too. Golden balls, you know, now because I mean, that's a good one, isn't it? That's gonna be, you know, that's one of those things I shouldn't have said, but as much as you actually take to a person, you can take against a person. And, uh, and, and, um, I mean, in the case of Meg Ryan, I mean, I didn't like her and she didn't like me. It's as simple as that. I mean, there was, there was no chemistry whatsoever except a very sort of anti chemistry. I didn't like her at all, and, and she thought I was, a, I was a dickhead. And I mean, <laughs> and so there we had this wonderful sort of uh, uh, lack of, 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 of concern one for the other. And, and it's, it's like when you meet somebody again at a party you don't like, you then can walk away. Sadly, in television terms, you can't. You <laughs> sit down there thinking, oh my Christ, why did I book her? For God's sake? <laughs> She's thinking, oh my God, why the hell did I put myself through this? Mm. So, I mean, that, that's, that will inevitably happen. And, and there, are, there will be other moments, too, where it won't be as severe as that, but you don't actually like the person sitting opposite you. Mm. But and again, it's not a question. I mean, when you, when, you, when, you, uh, when you book people for a talk show, it's not, it doesn't matter whether you like them or not. The only thing you have to have in your mind is, do I admire them or not? Do I want to find out about them? <laughs> is there something about them that I want to discover? Like, dislike doesn't come into it. Mm.